Hi, hello, welcome to Knit in the City. Uh, I can hear that my voice, I, I mean, I haven't spoken yet. This is the first thing I'm saying today. So <laughs> unfortunately, my voice is a bit uh, whiskey-ish. Uh, I went to a Halloween party yesterday and I had a bit of alcohol, uh, which I haven't had. I mean, for the last two years, I've had maybe between five and eight drinks. So I'm practically not drinking at all. And uh, this is what I had yesterday. So I don't know what happened. Life is rough. <laughs> I've also slept like four hours. So yeah, I hope I my brain still works. We will see. Uh, if it doesn't, I guess I will have to redo this and you will never see it. Uh, those of you who've been, who have been with me for a while, probably recognizes uh, this setup. No, not the setup, because that's a lame excuse for a setup. Uh, all the plants are dying in this place because I'm not here anymore. Uh, I'm here to pack up my stuff. Uh, I mean, I already did move, but uh, my life is complicated. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into it. I'm back to pack up the last of my things. I have been procrastinating a bit. <clears throat> Sorry about, that. oh, <laughs> this just keeps getting worse. <laughs> um, yes. Okay, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I also didn't introduce myself, so yeah. This is Knit in the City, back in the city, just for a short while. I'm Rebecca, the city is Malmö. This is all backwards. Uh, today I'm here with a, an episode where I talk about what I've been doing during the month. I really hope my voice can get through this and that is not too annoying for you. <clears throat> um, I may have to go get a glass of water at some point. Uh, but yes, uh, I will be talking about my October plans, uh, what happened with those, uh, or what I've actually been doing in October. I will also tell you a little bit about my upcoming November plans. And uh, October is not really done yet, but I realize that I'm not going, I don't have any projects that I have the possibility of finishing during this month. That is only, I, there's only three days left for something like that. Um, <clears throat> and yes. Okay. Uh, my plans, uh, the UFOs that I wanted to finish was my, uh, or not wanted to finish, but wanted to work on, is my <clears throat> never ending story sweater, I think it's called. Uh, and this is a pattern from, I hope I remember this correctly, uh, Johanna Gerisch. And it looks like, this is the morning light. I'm not sure what time it is, but I don't think it's, it's somewhere between eight and nine a.m. <laughs> so it's a really nice light, but I don't know if it's video light. Uh, but here it is. This is a half fisherman's rib kind of thing. I think it's a half or is it a full one? Not sure. Um, it's a drop shoulder construction. And it looks really nice in the back because you start in the back like you usually do. Look at those nice lines. Uh, and then when you're, when you're somewhere here, I don't remember, you pick up for the front and it, this is a v-neck, as you can see. Uh, inside and outside is a little bit different. The, the right side is a bit more scrunched up looking. And this is, I mean, I don't know, this looks more like your traditional, like, fisherman's rib kind of thing. But this is not going to show. Um, and now I'm knitting in the round. So that is a different kind of... I put this to the side because I was working on the Vardag, which was finished last month. And that is also a half fisherman's rib uh, sweater with a v-neck. It doesn't really matter in the context, but still. Um, and you, you, do, you make the fisherman's rib in in different ways. So that was a bit confusing. So that's why this, I put this aside. Uh, I feel like I've got a, quite a lot done. 
but I mean, it really shrinks up. I mean, it's, I mean, it takes like at least half the time extra because I mean, it, it grows really slowly is what I'm trying to say. This yarn is uh, Viking Garn, some kind of merino. Uh, it will be in the, in the, um, in the description box. Uh, this is a non-superwash marina. They have a superwash one too, but this is the non-superwash. It's really nice. It's this like really light sea green. I can see how the light is screwing this up, but it's a sea green uh, that I am going to use as a neutral actually. Uh, I think this just, this comes along, like it's chugging along. Uh, I haven't run into any problems. I will talk about problems later, uh, but this one is fine. I also didn't start by telling you what I had finished during this month, but I guess the order doesn't really matter as long as I talk to, to you about everything. Uh, so the next UFO I wanted to work on, this quickly became a UFO because I made the mistake of casting on a sock. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, this is Peppa Kakeland or gingerbread country is the translation. Uh, it's from a Swedish Christmas song. Uh, so, I mean, it's really cute. It has all these uh, gingerbread cookie, uh, cookie cookies. <laughs> oh my God, this is bad. <laughs> Uh, it's supposed to look like gingerbread cookies because they have all these kinds of shapes like the uh, the people down here, the hearts. Uh, I was gonna say the goats. Yeah, they're goats. Yeah. So the, what you do here is, uh, the, I've already finished the leg and then you just do like you take some scrap yarn and this is where the heel is going to go. So I'm going to unpick this later and make the heel in the brown. And uh, so, I mean, I feel like the leg is really short and I probably should have done uh, an extra border here before. But it, it doesn't matter. Uh, I want to knit on these because it's annoying to have started another pair. Of socks that I'm not finishing and also I have um, I have joined a knit along where you knit Christmas socks which is really good because then I can finish this I also have another Christmas sock the toe up I'm gonna talk about that later uh, that I want to finish and I actually bought yarn for a third one because it's just so cute uh, that will be coming up in a in the next uh, monthly roundup episode, I think. Okay, uh, and the last UFO I wanted to... No, it's not the last one, actually. It's the next to last one. And I have been talking about this a lot, so I'm go just gonna show it to you real quick. And uh, this is Fastos Kofta by Maya Carlson. Uh, I, the reason this is a UFO is I haven't touched it since I last talked about it. This is really blowing out. Uh, but this is the body. I have finished the body. It looks really short, but I mean, I'm mostly legs. I have a short torso and I want to be wearing this over a dress. So it's going to be quite cropped anyway. Uh, if I need to add more length to it, it's pretty simple. Uh, I started the sleeve. And... Yeah, and my initials are going to go here. Yeah, it's, it's cute. Uh, that's it. That's all I'm going to say about this right now, because I'm a little bit annoyed with myself that I haven't touched it. Um, okay, and the last UFO I wanted to finish. Uh, actually, this was a list of whips and UFO. I put them in the same category. Yes, because I was thinking, I, I mean, I, it's, I knit on this at the beginning of the month. 
Uh, and the sock as well. I actually knit on this sock a few days ago. Yeah, my brain definitely isn't working. But I think, I mean, this is reality. It's, we can all, we can all recognize ourselves in this, I guess. We've all been like all over the place. And uh, yeah, I mean, of course, you don't have to put up videos when you're all over the place, but I think I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, uh, the interchangeable mitten liners that I was making for my daughter uh, in the wine colored yarn. Uh, this is old yarn, it's not possible to get it anymore, but it's a thin wool yarn and uh, mohair. It's not a silk mohair. Because it's kind of scratchy. I think there's not, it's just mohair and nylon. Uh, I don't have them here. I actually don't know where they are. I asked her, I checked the, the drawer where she has all her hats and gloves and winter stuff. They were not there. Uh, I mean, she's a bit like me. She doesn't know where her stuff goes. She's a disorganized. We're disorganized. So unfortunately, I don't have them here. I also don't have a picture because the picture that I have, I only knit this much. Uh, I, my own mitten liners that I loved so much, I can't find them. Uh, I'm so scared that I lost them at work. And also with my Oslo hat, that I, the pink one that I really love. But I will put a picture so that you know what I'm talking about. I finished those, so that's great. I didn't have that much left when I talked about them last month. So that was kind of expected. Um, yeah, so they're done. That is a finished object. And that takes me straight into the other finished objects that I managed to get done this month. And that was the arched gusset mittens, my second pair of arched gusset mittens that I made in uh, Drops Lima. And they're leftovers from a skirt that I knit for myself that I don't wear because it's a ribbed skirt. Uh, it goes below the knee. It has a slit in each side. Uh, it's a really pretty skirt, but it like, it's like this, it cinches in. And my biggest point is my hips and my belly. And this really highlights my belly. And I mean, it's not a good look. I need a skirt that flares out a little bit. And this is not. Okay, I'm. Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, so that is the leftovers from that skirt. And these fit me, as you can see, but they're a bit short. I don't know why I always make mittens too short. And they are quite snug, which isn't a problem. It's pretty nice. but. I just feel like <clears throat> when my fingers are just wanting to come through the fabric, that's, that's unpleasant. So I gave these to my youngest daughter because this is a good, I mean, this is a great color on her. She's a bit warmer than the rest of us. Uh, so yeah, and I still have like two and a half balls left of this yarn. So I'm thinking to make her a hat. And uh, I did knit her a uh, classic ribbed hat from Pearl Soho. This is also a Pearl Soho pattern. Uh, a white one that she really liked and that she lost. Uh, I guess there's more of us that are disorganized. Uh, but I'm thinking to make one of those with the leftovers of this yarn, because then she has a set, which is always nice. Then I cast on something that I wasn't allowed to do. Uh, but I'm not too strict with myself when it comes to knitting. So this one is a Wool and Beyond pattern. She actually uh, re released a book. Uh, it's um, The concept of the book is a knitted capsule wardrobe. So you can mix and match all of the pattern. It's a really nice book. I'm not going to talk about it too much because as of now, it only comes in Swedish. Uh, so this is called Mössan, which simply means the hat. Uh, and this is a brioche stitch. And I really like the... This, these are actually increases because you start at the top. You do a little provisional cast on thingy. <clears throat> Sorry about that. 
and then you knit down uh, so these are increases and I mean I think that I've upped my brioche game this doesn't look bad right and this is actually a hat that is knit flat which shocked me at first and I was like Mah. but then she said that you knit the two so this is where it was open and you knit this together so then I was like okay fine I'll try so after you finish the 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 head part uh, knitting back and forth then you start knitting in the the brim in the round and this is just a one one rib so nothing fancy uh, and this at the end is an I cord bind off uh, and then you pick up stitches here and you knit this dark gray part fold it over and then you just sew it down which was a bit fiddly because as you can see this fabric is longer than the part of the hat you're sewing it down to so it does get a little bit wobbly uh, but it looks like that in the book as well so not just me I think this is a really cool hat uh, I'm not sure I look very good in it but I mean this let me see, I'm ruining the hair now, but that's fine. Um, but I did wear it last night coming home and it's like so warm. It's knit in Drops Lima and this is the leftovers from my storm sweater. So I'm doing a good job of using my leftovers. And this gray one, uh, the, they're both gray. <laughs> the dark gray one, that is also leftovers from uh, I think it's called the polo sweater or something like that by Caitlin Barton that I also made uh, and haven't worn a lot because this yarn is Stay by Merinor, I think it's called. Uh, it has a lot of alpaca in it, which makes it so warm and I mean, it is getting colder now, so I, I'm going to be able to wear it soon. But yeah, this the thing with this is like it has this little condom top it's supposed to be taller I think more like a yeah I should go this way <laughs> more like a hipster kind of thing but I didn't want to make it too long because I kind of don't like that look and now this is what we've got but I mean I am six feet so no one's gonna see what's going on up here anyway so I mean we're good yeah, that's it. That was a lot of talk about a hat. Uh, then I decided to cast on some things from my library because that was the, the new category that I started. And uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I, th I think I probably had already started this uh, last month, a month ago. Uh, but this is Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter and I mean look at these pretty cables that's so nice uh, and this is knit from the top down as you can see it's a raglan construction uh, it's knit in a really lovely yarn from uh, Seoul Kusten's Ull Spinneri that is sadly no longer around uh, this is their one ply wool uh, Gotland wool I think yes and it is, it has a bit of a halo, it's quite fussy. Uh, so this kind of fills out space between the stitches, which is great because I'm actually knitting this on four millimeter needles and you're not supposed to. I don't remember, I think it's a 3.5 actually, but I wanted this to be somewhat airy. And also, I mean, I didn't make a gauge swatch, but my gauge is always a bit tighter than it's supposed to be so i went for it so i mean you can see how thin this is like a light fingering weight but i mean yeah it's so fussy it looks thicker but some parts of this yarn you feel like it's gonna break uh, but it doesn't uh, so to be knitting this on four millimeter needles and it's still not see-through this is just the front part. So 
I'm thinking this is probably a woolen spun, but I, I don't know. Yes, so this is also a v-neck, so this it's all about v-necks now. Because, I mean, I have come to realize that the, the high crew neck is probably not the best look on me. Uh, so I wanted to make some more v-necks. This was a conscious decision. Uh, and then the color work. Uh, oh yeah, now you could now you you got to see all of my chins. Uh, so this is the border, which I mean this is so pretty. She makes such pretty color work. Uh, yeah, so I have to walk you through this. This is Jameson and Smith uh, for ply something. It's gonna be down there. Uh, and these come in 25 gram balls, so they're intended for color work. This is also a lovely yarn. Yeah, I forgot to say that this yarn is rustic, uh, but it's also like, it has a sheen to it. It's like soft and prickly at the same time. And that is the best kind of yarn. Uh, yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm just drooling over here. Yeah. So there's the dark purple that you can see. Then there's a light purple. And these are all slightly heathered. I should probably show you one of the balls so that you can see more clearly. Uh, this must come as a surprise because I'm sure you didn't see any green in there. It is there, I promise. Uh, so, I mean, it's not the best light. It's so orangey. This is a cooler color than you would think by looking at it in this morning light. But you can see the heathered effect. Now I can see what the yarn is called. Uh, no, this is a two-ply, great. <laughs> it's a two-ply jumper weight. But as you can see, this is a 25 gram ball. Yes. Uh, and this is also a fingering weight. It's a little bit thicker. Uh, but they work well together. Uh, so, I have the dark purple, which I actually ran out of. I bought this yarn for a different project that I frogged because it didn't work out. Uh, and the dark purple, I don't have any more of it. So, this has come to an unfortunate halt. Uh, the light purple is this one. And yeah, it's those three. And I will tell you, because here I am alternating a gray and a green. And you can't really see it, but you can see, I think you can see, that the, this is different from this. But it's supposed to be like a checkered thing, and it's not. But I'm fine with that. It's okay. It was supposed to, I mean, in the pattern, she only uses two different colors for this border. But I wanted to use the green as well, because I think it's pretty. And I have made one sleeve and I have heavily modified this. I mean, it's very simple modifications, but you were supposed to do, I think, just one round of the gray after you pick up the stitches. And then the color work was going to be here, because this is kind of a, it looks three quarter length on the model. I don't know how that's possible, unless she has really short arms. Uh, it's probably because uh, the model is wearing a sweater that is a lot more oversized on her than this is on me. And that's why the arms fall lower. But I have knit like 30 centimeters of stockinette here before I started the border, because I want, I want full length sleeves, because uh, this is, even though it's airy, it's still going to be really warm. And then I don't want half of my arms out. Uh, and I mean, I have had, I have made some three quarter length uh, hand knitted garments and I never wear them because I mean, a wool garment is going to be warm. And if it's cold enough to wear it, you don't want like this part out in the cold. Yeah, you get it. It doesn't work for me. So I'm making this full length. I haven't made any decreases here. 
because I mean in the pattern it's the sleeve is kind of balloony even though it stops here um, I don't know why that would be strange <laughs> uh, so this is also and there are some decreases within this pattern so this is going to be a balloon sleeve which I like it that's really nice and you don't have to bother with the decreases either so that's great but yeah this project has come to it it's not the same pattern over here but it's similar so I have the green here as well and I uh, this has come to a halt because I'm out of dark purple and I mean there is a there is a yarn shop in Lund, which is, uh, you can get there by train quite quickly. So, I mean, and she carries this yarn. I, that's where I bought the yarn to begin with. Not hard. I can go there. I can buy a 25 gram ball and be good to go. But it's not going to happen today because it's Sunday. And then I'm not going to be in the city for a few days. And yeah, you don't need to hear my whole life story. <laughs> next project. Yes. Uh, the next project that I wanted to knit from my library is uh, the Lume Pullover from Sari Nordlund. And this is not as fun as I was anticipating. Uh, sorry, that's all of my arm. This is such a messy episode. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, this is such a lovely pattern. I started making, this is just a one, one rib uh, for the neck. And then I started the color work, which looks pretty nice. I think I made an increase round uh, here before the color work starts. I don't really remember. Then I am making a second increase round here, the one that I'm on right now. It does not work out. I don't, it doesn't end up where it's supposed to be ending up in the chart. So I don't know. I have two extra stitches after I've finished. Uh, I have no idea. Because the thing with this is the increases are in the chart. Uh, it, the chart doesn't tell you how many stitches you're supposed to have after you've done the increasing. Which means, I don't know. I can, of course, do the math and figure it out. But I don't really think I should have to. Uh, so this is a bit annoying. I mean, I, I am going to, of course. But this has been lying... Because this is the second time I'm making this increase round and getting the same result, which is no result. Because it's not working out. And I was so excited to start this, so I'm a bit bummed, actually. But yeah, the yarn. And this, this is Drops Lima. I mean, if you if you didn't know, you, you may be able to tell that I really like Drops Lima. It's a wool alpaca blend. I think it's mostly wool. It doesn't feel, it's not hairy like al alpaca. I mean, a little bit, but not much. But this... <coughs> Oh, sorry. <coughs> yeah. This is the perfect brown, which you also can't tell in the orange morning light, because this just warms it up a bit. A lot. Like, more like this, perhaps. Because uh, this is a cool brown. This has like a purplish, pinkish undertone. And it's probably a bit too dark for me, but I don't care, because it's, it's gorgeous. And... I'm holding, the, not holding this, this is the main color as you could tell. Uh, for the stranded color work, I am using Klippans Tvåtrådiga. So this is like your run-of-the-mill two-ply wool yarn, 100% wool. And as you can see, this is, it's not a fingering weight, even though it looks like it is. It's a sport weight, because you get 300 meters on a 100 gram hank. Uh, so I'm holding two of these together. And this is also such a lovely pink. It's like a dusty pink or mauvey kind of pink. And it goes really well with the brown. Uh, the, I think, no, I may, this may be a little bit thicker 
uh, than the main yarn when you hold it together, but it's not going to be a problem. The problem is that I can't get this to match up. <laughs> so, I mean, this has been lying. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I haven't, after I did the, this the second time, I haven't touched this because I'm mad. Stupid Lume. Uh, but yeah, I'll get to it when I've, I'm in a better mood. I guess. Yes. Uh, and uh, the other one, the other pattern from my library that I wanted to make was the arched gusset mittens and those are finished. So there you go. And then I had two new cast-ons that I wanted to start. Uh, and that was the Zen jacket, which I did not start because I don't have yarn for it. So I would have had to order yarn to get that going, and I have not. Uh, the other one was Tuku by the Petite Knitter. Uh, it's a lovely colorwork yoke pullover. And I haven't started that either because I actually got up accepted for a test knit for Teti Lutzak. So I mean, mind blown. That's amazing. Uh, and that is also... Uh, a color work yoke sweater uh, and I had to dig deep into my yarn stash to find yarn for this I mean she did say that this is not a secret test knit so I think I can show this to you and this is called the candelariella that's a mouthful and it's a round yoke stranded color work pullover and I haven't and I mean she has these lovely you start with one color and this, and then you just, I think you just knit one round and then there's the other color. I mean, it looks really nice. So, um, I started the color work here. I don't, I don't want to talk about it too much, but yeah, this is where I'm at. It's really lovely. I am afraid to show you a picture as well, so I'm not going to do that, but you will see it once it's finished. I'm knitting it in Esther by Perman, and this is a, I think it's a 45 cut cotton, 55 wool, and this lovely, and this is kind of the forest green that I was talking about uh, in my winter knitting plants episode. So that's good. And because of the cotton, this is not going to be a super hot sweater which is also great and it's a fingering weight yarn or they they both are uh i'm doing the color work with i was like scrambling <laughs> to, to get started on this but this is drops fable it looks white but it has uh, gray in it it's like a really light gray uh, it does look gray in the or it does look white in the pattern as well but yeah it's uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it has little flecks of gray in here. Okay, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. What else? Yeah, the things I wanted to have finished was the Fastos Kofta, which was like, who am I trying to fool here? Uh, that wasn't going to happen. Uh, this one, yes. Uh, and the, the mitten liners, which I did finish. So, feeling good about that. I feel like I'm not getting enough light now, which is strange because we're getting further into the day. Uh, okay, my November plans. It's a bit different, just like it was this month, but it's different in a different way. Uh, so, what I wanted to do was get some Christmas knitting done in November because that's a good idea. I don't think I'm going to do a lot of Christmas knitting. Uh, what I have planned so far is just for my kids. Maybe I'll do something for my father as well, like a pair of socks or a... Because he's such a knit-worthy person. He wears everything I knit. He's so cute. I made these uh, fingerless mitts because he's always cold. And... Uh, he and I, I, I noticed that he was wearing them all the time. So then I knit him a second pair, and months and months went by, and he wasn't wearing the new pair. And I'm like, 
how come you're not wearing the new ones? And then he goes, well, I wanted to wear out the first pair before I use them. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. So then I knit him a hat for Christmas and a third pair of, uh, of fingerless mitts. And the yarn I was using wasn't like the finest uh, or greatest yarn yarn you could find because so i mean i think they're going to wear out quite quickly uh, at least the first pair yes okay so what i wanted to do was make my kids some christmas not christmas sweaters because uh, some sweaters for christmas so i have uh, the horrible <laughs> uh uh, the one that uh, my mother bought the yarn for and then decided she didn't want to knit, which was a great decision on her part. Not so great for me, who had to knit them. Uh, I still have a big sister's sweater left and I hope it's going to fit her. And I really want that to be done so that I can give it to her for Christmas. Uh, I don't have it with me, but I, I will put a picture of little sister wearing hers. And this is a pattern that my mother got from like a monthly magazine or something. So it's not, it, it doesn't even have a name. Uh, and the second thing that I want, uh, the second UFO that I want to work on, and this is like kind of Christmas themed now. That is my second pair of Christmas socks. Uh, that is called Jere Backe by Evelina Rius. It's the same designer who designed these. Uh, but this is a toe-up sock, so that's even more painful. And I also don't have those here because of the whole moving situation. And I have stuff in three different locations. <laughs> so there you go. But I also, I mean, I put a picture, I will put a picture on that, of that as well. Uh, I think both the, the picture from the designer and also my progress, which is ridiculous, but there you go. Yes, it would be really nice if those were finished for Christmas so that I could actually wear them. Uh, the whips I'm working on is obviously the test knit because it has to be finished before the month is over. And I'm feeling this thing breathing down my neck. But I mean, it was time for a test knit and I'm really happy that I got accepted for this one because I mean, it's such a pretty, pretty pullover. Uh, yes. Uh, the the second whip that I'm not really excited to work on because there has to be some math done first is Lume. But I mean, look at this. It's going to be so pretty once I finish it. So, I mean, I'm not ready to give up just yet. Yeah. Uh, and then also Nordiska, of course. Once I have uh, procured the yarn to finish the sleeves because I mean this is not a lot of work left and it's I mean apart from knitting this this part of this sleeve it's it's a fun it, it's a fun it's fun knitting yeah okay what else and the cost ons I'm planning is nothing for myself I mean I don't, I mean I, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to succeed on that uh but what I want to cast on is a storm sweater for my youngest daughter. I mean, both of my kids wanted a storm sweater. And I am going to knit them both a storm sweater. But I don't know if I want to make two storm sweaters within one month or two months. That just doesn't sound fun to me. And I already knit myself one, so I, I am familiar with the process. I mean, I, I always find it more fun when I start something new and I don't know what's going to happen. That is, that is like the, such a big joy of the knitting process that <clears throat> that's why I don't read through a pattern before, or I was going to say that's why I don't gauge swatch, but that it, it really isn't. That's not why it, gauge swatching is boring and tedious. So that's why I don't do it. And also the, it doesn't really, I mean, with the test knit, of course I've swatched. I mean, you have to. Uh, <clears throat> but when I'm just knitting for myself, I kind of find that it doesn't always give you the right result anyway. So 
Why bother? Well, it's just my disorganized personality shining through here. Okay, yes. I also want to cast on a Margaret T for my oldest daughter. Uh, and she can have her storm sweater later. Because she saw this and she was like, wow, that's gorgeous. I want one of those. And I happen to have yarn for this in my stash. Uh, I have a few balls of drops, baby merino. And I also have a matching mohair, which is not drops, but some other brand that I can't remember right now. But we'll put down here uh, in the in a purple like a kind of light it's not super light it's like a medium to light purple color uh, and I can put that on the screen as well so that you can see I was planning to make something for myself with this yarn but that didn't turn out the way I wanted it to so and I ha it's the perfect amount for a Margaret tea so that's what I'm going to make her for Christmas what I want to have finished, or what I have to have finished, is the Candelariella sweater. I mean, I have to. Uh, and I found a few more balls of the green yarn, because I was a bit nervous that I didn't have enough. But I found a few more balls when I was packing things up here. So it's going to work out. Um, and I also want to finish the sweater for my daughter, the one that I have been working on for way too long and I'm so sick of and I just want it to be finished uh, so yeah and that's all I had for today and I hope you're not too upset with me for being so disorganized and uh, I hope my voice didn't bother you too much <laughs> uh, I just felt like I wanted to make a last video in this maybe there will be one more actually because i will be back here in two weeks mm. i will have a full weekend here in two weeks again uh, yeah but that's all i had thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one have a nice day